All right, it's about 2.30 in the morning after a long investigation at McPike. Um, our crew's all packed up. We're getting ready to leave. But I wanted to just let everyone know to speed up the editing process that during the night we had some pretty amazing things happen on a personal level. Uh, one of our investigators, Tony, was touched on her elbow repeatedly down in the cellar. We had a ton of electri electronic problems. We had our, one of our cameras uh, completely crapped out on us and we never could get it working. We had my video camera, the one I'm using right now, it died on me. I'm, I was videotaping and it just went dead. We had our camera uh, that we were snapping pictures with, it just went dead. And then we had um, really nice walkie-talkies that we used, two-way radios, and we have them locked on Channel 5, uh, on the regular Channel 5, and a security Channel 5, so it can't go up or down or move, and that's our secured channel, so no one can break in and we don't get any static from uh, truckers or anything. Those, we had a bolt charge for six or seven hours. Those went out on us, and not both of them, just one of them. One of them went completely dead on us, so we put it back on the charger. You know, it had a full, totally dead battery, put it back on the charger, and then we um, locked it all up. It was on channel 5 and 5. Both of them were. And every time we went into the second story bedroom up in McPike in the mansion, we, uh, no matter what, the, the two-way radio would not work. And then as I was trying to use it, the one in the cellar started going up from channel 5 to 7 and 6 and 7 and then back down to 5, up and down and up and down and up and down, which it shouldn't be able to do because it's locked. But then when I came back downstairs from that room, it actually worked again. It was totally fine um, and locked. You could not make it go up or down. It was still locked on channel 5 and 5. But whenever I would go upstairs into that uh, second story room, the, everything would go haywire. That's, that's where the camera went dead. That's where the, the, the other camera shut off. That's where the um, regular uh, digital camera turned off on us. And, and that is also where the walkie-talkie... I could walk anywhere else in the house and it, you, you'd hear me just fine. I'd go into that room and all you'd hear is a big jumbled mess and nothing else. So we had a lot of personal experiences at McPike. It's a really neat place and what you're about to see or hear will be whatever evidence we caught um, that night. Uh, as for ticks and clinks and pops and knocks, we didn't get a lot tonight. But I'm hoping that we caught some things on. We had, we had three DVR uh, cameras going throughout the house. And we also had um, our, our recorders going throughout the house. So what I'm hoping is we caught something. And if we did, you're going to see it in a couple seconds. If not, this, this uh, little video is going to end right about now. So anyway, I'm hoping there's going to be some evidence for you. If not, um, then wait till our next investigation. Hopefully we have something else. Thank you. Oh, by the way, another thing I forgot to, to let you know. Um, during our first investigation when we were at McPike, we were unreeling all our, unreeling all of our cables, you know, setting it all out for all of our uh, video cameras, you know, our DVR cameras or our night vision cameras and everything. And there's this hole in the floor we were putting the cables through. And, and as we were putting the cables through, the first time we were there, um, you know, I unwrap it and I put it through and all of a sudden, you know, it's zipping through my hand, zipping through my hand, someone's, you know, like someone's pulling it. Well, all of a sudden, um, I look around the first time we are there and, all of my crew is around me. No one's downstairs pulling this cable out of my hand, but someone was down there pulling the cable out of my hand. So that was the first time we went there, and that was like just a personal experience. Well, this time we were there, we're sitting there, and we're putting the cable through the floor again. And I'm actually explaining the story to um, three other people that are in the room with us, and um, I'm explaining to them, like, yeah, last time we were here, this was going on, blah, 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 and all that. Well, as I'm doing it, this cable, I go, it's just like this, and the cable's just flying out of my hand and flying out of my hand, and, uh, and, and, and then all of a sudden it gets, it, it, it's, you know, I, I thought I'd let enough out and it tugged a couple times and I yelled down, Hey Heather, you need more? Well, Heather was outside smoking a cigarette. No one was down in the basement. Someone was just pulling that cable all by itself. And it happened with three other witnesses right in front of it. Unfortunately, we had no one downstairs or a camera going downstairs where the cable had gone through, but it was still a great little experience and thought I'd, I'd share that with you.
be known to us. Is there a spirit in this house that would like to communicate? What is your name? If you speak into these red lights, we'll be able to hear you. Tell us your name. How old are you? Tell us your name. Tell us your name.